Every black that I know, you need to find him to start with. He's a snake. Columbus County. That's the voice of Columbus County Sheriff Jody Green. An incredible phone call caught on tape talking about his African American employees. WECT just obtained a copy of that call and we have now learned the SBI has opened an investigation into allegations of obstruction of justice at the Columbus County Sheriff's Office. Investigative reporter Ann McAdams has this exclusive story and joins us now with that recording. Ann? Fran, on one end of the phone is current Columbus County Sheriff Jody Green. On the other end is Jason Souls, the man who previously served as interim sheriff while officials settled a dispute over the 2018 election. We should warn you there is some graphic language in this call. Sheriff Green says, quote, he is sick of these black bastards and that every black he knows needs to be fired. If I had to fire every motherfucker out of guess what? They, I'm tired of this They have no more. No goddamn more. That's the voice of Columbus County Sheriff Jody Green. He won his seat by 34 votes in an election that was so highly contested, he'd been temporarily removed from office while officials settled the election disputes. That was the setting the night Green called acting sheriff Jason Souls, saying their office had a snitch. Immediately after being appointed to the interim sheriff, I um, started to get a lot of phone calls from Jody late at night. And um, this one particular phone call that we received, he made the comment that he hated Democrats. And then he said, I, I take that back. I hate a black f***ing Democrat. And, and I knew right at the end, I was like, wow, this is coming from the sheriff. And, and I had to start recording those conversations. Former sheriff Lewis Hatcher was the first African-American ever to serve as sheriff in Columbus County. Green says on the call, he's specifically concerned that people in his office are leaking information to Hatcher and Melvin Campbell. Another African-American officer, Green fired shortly after taking office. It's stopping. Tomorrow's going to be a new day. I'm still the mother sheriff, and when I, I'll go up there and fire my guy. F***ing black bastards. That's like, I'm scared. That's stupid. It gets worse. After the sheriff explains that he's getting phone records from Verizon to trace anyone in his office who's called Campbell or Hatcher, he lets Souls know the plan. Former Sergeant Melvin Campbell said he was so surprised when he heard this recording of the sheriff talking like this about him, he had to listen to it twice. Before taking the job at the sheriff's office, Campbell, who received the order of the Longleaf Pine from the governor, spent 30 years as a highway patrol officer under Jody Green's supervision. And I worked with him, and it kind of shocked me. You know what I mean? That that came out of his mouth. I thought we were friends. But with friends like that, who needs enemies? In the months that followed, the only two black members of Sheriff Green's command staff were demoted or fired. Soul says ever since making that recording, he's been working to bring it to the attention of county commissioners, court officials, the attorney general, and the SBI over concerns that the county's most powerful law enforcement leader had a bias against black people. I was told to just keep documenting everything that happens so that we would have a, a paper trail of it, and we did. But Souls said no matter who he and his supporters turned to, nothing happened. Souls is now running against Green for sheriff and doesn't want people to think his actions are politically motivated. But he says people need to know the real Jody Green. And I didn't want to do this to begin with. You know, I, I wanted help. I wanted to do it the right way. And I have reached out to everyone that I know to reach out to. I've even tried to get to the governor. You know, I've, I've worked, I started at the bottom with the commissioners and worked all the way to the top to the AG's office and the governor's office. But I just can't get, seem to get any help. We spoke to Sheriff Green about the recording on Monday. At the time, he said he had no recollection of that conversation, so we provided him with a copy of the recording. Late this afternoon, he posted a statement on Facebook saying his office serves citizens of all races, and although he admits to using offensive language, he denies saying anything with racial or malintent. Green said he would cooperate fully with the SBI investigation. If you would like to hear the entire recording, we have it posted online inside the story on WECT.com. 
Ann McAdams, WECT News. The challenges to Jody Green's re-election stem from those now infamous racist audio recordings. But racism is only part of the problem. Green's tenure as sheriff also came with accusations ranging from intimidation to abuse of power. WECT's investigative reporter Michael Pratz has been looking into how we got here and what lies ahead for the folks in Columbus County. Yeah, Fran, and even if Green overcomes the election challenges, which, as you said, are now at the state level, he has an uphill battle with the State Bureau of Investigation looking into the allegations and a district attorney determined to keep him from serving as sheriff. Every black that I know, you need to find him to start with. He's the That's Columbus County Sheriff Jody Green back in 2019 speaking with former captain of criminal investigations, Jason Souls. That recording sparked the ongoing legal challenges Green faces once he is sworn into office. District Attorney John David took action to remove Green from office in October. But before a judge could hear the evidence to take that step, Green resigned. Hatcher versus Green. This isn't the first controversy surrounding Green's eligibility to serve as sheriff. When he was first elected to office in 2018, Green's candidacy was challenged after it was alleged he did not live in Columbus County. Gloria Smith is the one who first brought that election challenge against Green in 2018. Ultimately, the North Carolina State Board of Elections determined Green was eligible to serve as sheriff. With these latest allegations against Green causing new concerns, Smith hopes there will finally be resolution. I feel in my heart, it's going it's to come out. It's going to come out. Justice is going to be served and the truth is going to be told because paper trails do not lie. Paper trails along with recordings and other evidence are what David plans to use to once again ask a judge to remove Green from office. While Green's resignation put an end to the removal process in October, David promised to continue his attempt to prevent Green from serving as sheriff. In a statement, David said, should Green be successful in the November election, my office would have an ethical obligation to file and will file a new petition to remove Green from that term of office based on the allegations alleged in the current petition to remove. It's really just one part of this story. In the DA's 54-page petition to remove Green, he lists several allegations of corruption, maladministration, and willful misconduct while in office, one of which includes an alleged sexual relationship with the deputy at the sheriff's office, Samantha Hickman. David says the evidence he's obtained includes two audio recordings as well as evidence independently obtained by his office regarding the sexual relationship between Green and Hickman. Green is also accused of intimidation and abusing the power of his office. Those allegations date back to when Green was first running for office and after the election. During the recorded phone call with Souls, Green told his former captain that he suspected a leak within the department and was going to use cell phone data to prove it. There's a snitch in there somewhere telling what we're doing, and I'm not going to have it. So I'm thinking that there's full phone records, and start checking. I ain't putting trackers on people, but the phone records do the deal. I've already called Verizon. That guy's going to give me the records, and I'm gonna, we're going to go through. Sol said he's seen firsthand the intimidation attempts and the impacts it's had on the community. They're really scared to come forward because of the fear of being retaliated against by the sheriff. In fact, Sol's stepfather, Jesse Kroom, was arrested following a county commissioner's meeting. He looked at the, uh, Jody and said, you need to grow up. And Jody said, lock him up. He had one of the deputies to arrest him and lock him up. Eventually, Kroom was charged with disorderly conduct in a public building, a charge that was formally dismissed months later in June of 2020. Although there are more than a dozen affidavits included in the petition to remove Green, few of the folks involved have been willing to speak with WECT. Sol says living in the county under Green's reign can be summed up in one word. It's scary. It's really scary. And that's the reason I'm here today. It's got to stop. In 2019, Whiteville City Manager Darren Curry says he received an irate phone call from Green who was upset that the Whiteville Police Department hired Souls after he was fired from the sheriff's office. Curry says Green told him if Souls was on his property, meaning the county jail, Green would have him arrested. But the allegations don't stop there. Former County Commissioner Edwin Russ says he also faced what he called intimidation tactics after commissioners voted against providing the sheriff's office with a request for pay raises and riot gear. In an affidavit, Russ and current commissioner Buddy Byrd describe an uncomfortable situation where roughly 20 deputies 
lined the sidewalk leading into the commissioner's building following the passing of the county budget. Russ, Byrd, and John David all believe the show of force was an intimidation tactic orchestrated by Green. The fallout from these allegations have been far-reaching. State programs like the North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program hold funding from the county, and folks are concerned with the impacts Green's actions will have on bringing businesses to the county. Impacts that could once again become a reality if Green retakes his position. And there is a general fear that if David's attempts to remove Green from office fail, there could be even more consequences for those who dare to speak out against him. Coming up, we're going to hear from some of those people from the community and talk about the possible lasting impacts Green's legacy will have on the county. Michael Pratt's WECT News. As we reported earlier, Jody Green was supposed to be sworn in tonight as Columbus County Sheriff. But election challenges and appeals have now postponed that event, and there's a chance it won't happen at all. Tonight in part two of our WECT investigation, Michael Pratz has more on what's next in the legal battle and what impact Green's leadership could have for years to come. Trust in law enforcement is fundamental to any community, but... Some people living in Columbus County say the allegations against Jody Green have damaged that bond. Curtis Hill is the president of the Columbus County NAACP chapter. He says racist recordings and other allegations of intimidation have very real impacts on folks living in Columbus County. And it just heightens, um, as you know, the pressures that African-American young men have anyway, or women, um, when they're stopped by the police. Um, it just heightens those kind of things because you just don't know. Um, if that's going to be. So we, we really want to, to ensure folks that they are going to be safe. Gloria Smith has lived in Columbus County for years and even worked for the Sheriff's Department for a time. She says these allegations of corruption and abuse of power have shaken the community. A lot of civil people's civil rights have been violated throughout this county. But I just have never seen nothing like this. Smith says trust in law enforcement is vital, but says that trust has been violated. If you can't trust law enforcement, I mean, who can you trust? This is not about Democrats. It's not about Republicans. It's about democracy. Still, she's hopeful that the trust will be restored. So this too shall come to pass, and um, the community will be willing to work with law enforcement, you know, because we have to depend on them. Keisha James is an attorney who works for the National Police Accountability Project. She says there are major challenges when it comes to holding law enforcement accountable for their actions, especially when it comes to those in high-ranking positions. And when you have um, individuals at the top who are the ones who hold these views themselves and are you know, encouraging or condoning this behavior, that becomes difficult because they are setting the tone for the entire agency. District Attorney John David has already called on the State Bureau of Investigation to conduct its own investigation into Green and these allegations. He's also promised to once again ask a judge to remove Green from office. And Hill wants David to stick to his word. But we also want to um, encourage the district attorney to go out and reiterate or to say what is his timeline for for, um, because he said before he is going to re-engage in the removal process of him once, he is, once he's sworn in, we just would like to have a public declaration of that fact so we would know, so the public will know when that's supposed to occur and how, because we think that any time that he is actually in, in the sheriff's office in Columbus County is not a good time for the citizens of Columbus County. And these investigations into Green are still ongoing, as are those petitions challenging his candidacy. Those challenges will likely come to a close sooner than any investigation does, but it's clear that if Green hopes to regain his seat as sheriff in Columbus County, he's going to face many hurdles. Michael Pratt's WECT News.